All right, in this video, we're going to talk about biomolecules, and we're going to cover multiple areas in biomolecules. We're going to talk about carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. So get your notes ready. There's multiple things we're going to write down in this section. I'm going to go through each category one at a time and give you details. I'm going to try to give you some shortcuts to remember them, but there's a lot of information, so I'm just telling you in advance, be ready to write. If I get ahead of you, feel free to pause, catch up to me, and keep going. Let's start first with carbohydrates. All right. What elements are carbs composed of? All right. Now, what you may want to do each time I get to a page, you may want to pause, write the information down, and then watch me go through it to make sure you understand everything you've written. So we'll do carbs first. So if you want to pause, go ahead and do that, and I'll come back and explain here in a second. All right, what elements are carbs composed of? Carbohydrates are going to be composed of carbon, there's its symbol on the periodic table, hydrogen, there's its symbol, and oxygen. Carbohydrates are going to be made up of all three of these elements. Now, there are some shortcuts that help you remember them. In a carbohydrate, they're going to be in a ratio of C, H, and O of 1 to 2 to 1. What that means is if you reduced it down, you're going to have one carbon for every two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Okay? For, and it says that over here as well. But here's an example. Glucose is a very common carbohydrate. Now, sometimes you'll hear people talk about sugar. Uh, glucose is a sugar. Sugars fall within the carbohydrates. When you and I eat carbohydrates, the first thing our stomach acid does is break it down into simple sugars. And we'll talk about those sugars in a second because they are so important. Glucose has the formula C6H12O6. Now, reminder, linking things together in one of the earlier, or in one of the videos coming up, we're going to talk about photosynthesis. And in photosynthesis, this is what plants make in the process of photosynthesis. Okay, just as a reminder. Now, if you divide all of these by 6, 6 divided by 6 is 1, 12 divided by 6 is 2, 6 divided by 6 is 1. It's a 1 to 2 to 1 ratio. So it falls within the carbohydrates. Now, as we go through the rest of these molecules, you're going to start looking at some of them and think, wow, those look so similar. You want to look for shortcuts like this that help you know the difference. 1 to 2 to 1. Now, here's a little bit more about carbohydrates. All right? Carbohydrate monomers or simple sugars. Okay? The first are called monosaccharides. Okay? Mono means one. We're going to talk about, uh, and saccharide means sugar. So it means one sugar. So again, carbohydrates are broken down into monosaccharides first. Okay? So make sure you get this definition before we move on. All right, so these are the building blocks. So you put these together and you can make really complex. Now think of it this way building blocks. These are bricks. As you put more and more bricks together, you get a building. As you put more and more of these monosaccharides together, you get big, big carbohydrates. Here's an example. Here's a carbohydrate monomer glucose, the one that we looked a while ago. C6H12O6. Now just to make sure that you can see that, and I'll just go through a couple of them. You can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's my six carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can count all the H's. Okay, this is one that is, they love to ask questions about this. Helpful hint. Notice that in the middle of this molecule, it makes a six-sided figure. It's a hexagon. Okay, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So not everything in the world has that shape. So it'll be important. Just It's a sort of a visual clue for you. Glucose C6H1206. It's a simple, simple, it's a monomer, simple building block. A brick, as you put more and more together, you get bigger and bigger carbohydrates. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. So this is called a monosaccharide. Now there are also what are called disaccharides. Here's the definition for you to write down. Di means two, and again, saccharide means sugar, so it's two sugars. So you're going to take two monosaccharides, and you're going to join them together. You're going to link them together, and you're going to end up getting a disaccharide. Now, 
The part that gets us sometimes is what does this mean? Okay, all right, I'll show you that when we get the picture here in a second. All right, here is a picture of a disaccharide. Okay, now if you look at this picture, lactose, this is, uh, anytime you see a word that says os, like that's a sugar, lactose is actually milk sugar, sucrose is going to be glucose and fructose together. But here's what happens, going back to the top left corner. You take a galactose and a glucose and you put them together and it says by, uh, it said dehydration synthesis right there. Okay, you're going to lose a water and you have those attachments and what's going to happen is when they attach right here you lose an H2O and that's what it means by that. You lose an H2O just for them to be able to hook together right an H2O comes off. Okay, and you don't have to get any more detailed than that, but that'll help you with that. So basically, in this disaccharide, and so let me say this again, galactose and glucose. So you have two bricks, and those two bricks combined, you get a bigger carbohydrate, a bigger sugar, in this case, a disaccharide. Same thing is true for sucrose. A glucose and a fructose come together, and you lose that water and as it's attached, it just looks more complex. That's the only thing, okay? Notice how this one looks a little different. This is a five-sided figure, okay? So they start looking similarly. They have these structures in the middle with all these points coming off, okay? And so you get sucrose, and, and so that's what ends up happening to make this disaccharide. You can see both parts that together make it up. So basically, just as a reminder, we're taking these simple, simple monometers, monomers, excuse me, I said that wrong, like glucose, and we're attaching multiples together to make more complex. A monosaccharide and a disaccharide. It's that simple, okay? So I'll give you a hint on carbohydrates, all right? So carbohydrates are the first one. We'll check that one off. That one's done. Let's talk next about lipids, okay? What are the parts, elements that compose a, lip, a lipid? I'll give you a second to jot those down. Lipids are made of carbon, hydrogen, and a few oxygen. Hint, lots and lots of hydrogen. Lots and lots of hydrogens are found in lipids. Okay? Now these are going to be, the, the notes on this aren't going to be as detailed as the carbohydrates, but here are some important lipid facts. Okay, lipids are no, known as fats, oils, and waxes. So fats, all three of these, fall within the generic term of lipids. So fats and oils, you know, oil does not mix with water. That's what this says right here. Oil and water do not mix as they're trying to mix it in this glass right here in this picture, okay? Because of all the hydrogens on there and the way they are shaped, they just don't dissolve into water very well. So wax, that says beeswax right there, okay? Oils, okay, like cooking oils, fats, found in our foods, okay, all of those fall under what are called lipids. They have lots and lots and lots of hydrogens, okay, so those are our lipids. The next on the list was nucleic acids. I'll give you a second to jot this down. Nucleic acids have lots and lots of elements in them. They have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Those are new, nitrogen and phosphorus. Deoxyribonucleic acid, known as DNA, DNA, is the most common nucleic acid. You've seen this before. You have this double helix, this twisted ladder shape, okay? And they've shown you one side here where you have the nitrogenous bases. That's where you have the A's and T's and C's, G's and C's like you talked about in one of the other videos. And then you have sugars that make the backbone that they're stuck to. This is one side of that double helix. You could have the other side attached to it and you would have your double helix for DNA, okay? But they're gonna have the nitrogen and phosphorus, that sugar and nitrogenous base are a dead giveaway for nucleic acids. Here's a better picture, okay? And you'll definitely wanna write these down, especially this right here, ATP, the energy of the cell, adenosine, triphosphate, triphosphate. ATP is a slightly different structure than DNA and RNA. 
you'll notice it contains phosphate group, ribose, that's a sugar. How do I know? It says ose on the end of it. And then it's got adenine. Okay, remember A's, T's, C's, and G's, adenine, thymine, cytosine, guanine. Well, in adenosine triphosphate, the A attached on here, ATP is the energy of the cell. Okay, this is another example of a nucleic acid. So DNA is an example of a nucleic acid, and ATP is also. All right, nucleic acids. And again, this is just a review. You've learned all this before. It's just to get you caught back up to what you know. Okay, and last but not least, what elements are proteins composed of? I'll give you a second to jot these down. Proteins are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Do you notice that almost every one of these have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and then something different at the end? This one is big in the nitrogen category. As a matter of fact, this right here is the big part of proteins. It's called an amino group. Okay, now just like a while ago we had monosaccharides as a brick and you put multiples together and you get disaccharides, the same thing is true here. Amino acids are the single groups. Put multiple amino acids together and you get proteins. So you can think of them as a long string of sort of, a long string of these would make a protein. So here is an example of an amino acid. Okay, it has an amine group. Hint, whenever you see that NH2, I'll write it a slightly different way, an N and two H's, NH2, on the side, that's a dead giveaway every single time of an amino acid, which means it's going to be in a protein. That's a super big hint. So make sure you wrote all that down. If you have to go back and pause and go back, make sure you get all that. Here are those amino acids as building blocks. We mon Monomers, just like we talked about a while ago. Amino acids are the building blocks that make up proteins. There are 20 different kinds of amino acids that humans use. That amine group that I was just talking about in the other picture, drawn in a slightly different way, there it is right there. They have that what's called a carboxyl group, COOH. That part is the other part of your proteins. Okay, so they're going to have both those parts. Now, you'll notice in this picture you have exactly the same thing. It's just written differently. This is a little slightly better picture, but it works exactly the same way. Multiple amino acids together give you a protein. So these are the building blocks. Multiple ones together give you proteins. Okay? So in this lesson, we talked about the biomolecules that you need to know. Carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins.